I want you to meet Vaughn Husenstam, a fellow ambidexter and author of the book Pure Brain Training, which shares his personal journey of learning ambidexterity and highlights the benefits his brain and body has experienced along the way. Vaughn grew up primarily using his left hand, but for rehabilitation purposes connected with an injured left shoulder, he switched over at the age of 17 to using his right side. This came after a personal encounter he had with Michael J. Lavery, the author of Whole Brain Power, who encouraged Vaughn to develop his less dominant side. Vaughn was so inspired to see the results of Lavery's development of dual dominance that he decided to pick up the practice himself nearly 20 years ago. Since then, Vaughn has gone on to join the military, learn fluent Spanish, complete a mathematics degree, become a versatile musician, earn his pilot's license, and he even once won $20,000 in a chess competition. A pretty wide spectrum of talents and experiences if you ask me. Vaughn and I connected after he reached out once reading my book, Big 3 MMD, which talks about histories, ambidextrous, and the benefits of mirror movements development. I was so excited to chat with Vaughn and I knew I was gonna have to share it with everyone. In my book, I describe Michael Lavery as the brain man. Yes, I, I figured that's who you were talking about. That made perfect sense to me. Diego Irigoyen, you must know Diego. No, I don't think I do. Diego Irigoyen just wrote a book called Creative Brain Training. And when I heard the name of your book, I thought, dude, he must know Diego. So that's really wild that no, pure brain, brain training, they're, that you, you know, shit's have passed. Totally, yeah. Like, I never studied these guys. I My story was that I met the brain man when I was seriously, like, 15. He's super passionate about these concepts, being ambidextrous, memorizing things, and, uh, you know, being very competitive. He's a competitive guy. and, and working practicing every day with something the the interesting dynamic is that i think i gravitated towards all this stuff because i needed it because my left arm just wasn't working for me i had strength but not enough skill i was always injuring my shoulder hmm. and so the injuries happened to me as well with sports and now just, by what age did you realize yo this really sucks I got to do like, something like 17, easy. 17. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes or sense. Or younger. I was or 22. Younger. I was 22 when my body was completely messed up from skateboarding for 10 years. Yeah. But I had that extra awareness from being around this, the brain. Man. I just like to call him the brain. man. The brain. man. Yeah. 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 I met Lavery. I met Lavery, um, two years ago, three years ago, uh, in LA when I met EBA, Jeremy, do you know EBA? No, I don't know this guy. <laughs> the EBA, he is Team USA captain for beach handball. He's oh, the yeah. top in his sport globally, and he's uh, uniquely ambidextrous in his sport. Um, I think I he's know got a similar guy. story, like 10 years of practicing. He w he started practicing MMD like when he was 15. He's been doing it for more than 10 years, I think 13. Yeah, so I realized I needed it between the age of 15 and 17. and I think that I also realized a lot of other people needed it too. Mm -hmm. So I had more motivation than just my own personal success. I think we see a lot of people that are struggling, kind of stuck in one way of doing things, kind of stuck in one mentality. Like the classic wrong mentality is like just trying to be like in the NFL or in, in the NBA. <laughs> And it's just, Yo, unless you're doing it, Ambi, like, dude, there's uh, some, um, I think he's 18. I was just watching a video on him today. He's going to be the first to, it looks like they're going to get him on the um, Major League Baseball, the first ambidextrous pitcher to throw over 90. He's insane. Oh, this is like great. 19. So, okay. So there is a difference uh, between being serious about those ambitions because you really are putting in the time. And so you've been like watching your diet, you've been lifting weights where you got the right coaches and you had the right experiences previously. Like probably when you're 14, you were like in club baseball and you're pitching really good, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, then mm -hmm. you need to think about going pro. But the rest of us, we don't need to destroy our, our bodies because we've trained we're, before Nadal, because Rafael Nadal is a great example, by the way. Yeah. Um, but before Nadal, uh, it seemed like 
it, this, so this is the whole point, and this is why I'm so thrilled to meet you, is there is such resistance to the ambidextrous movement. I mean, just like... There is, there is. That would is, never is, work. There is. And it, so there is. I, yeah. <laughs> I fought right through it. So since I've been uh, really indoctrinated by the brain man, Michael J. Lavery, since he really kind of endowed me with this understanding that this is important and you should be excited about yeah. it. Yeah. I, 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 I never, cite his book a lot yeah. in my book. Yeah. I, I do, never truly. let it go. Yeah, I never let it go. Uh, I kept writing with my right hand forever. And I gave it a different name. At the end of the finish line, I'm glad to call it dual dominance. But along the way to get to dual dominance, I call it shared dominance. Yeah, okay, okay. Because, okay yeah. yeah, yeah, because you're like really strong, whatever your dominant is. And you have to just kind of let that chill out and share that energy and it takes a long time it's it's not so you know it, it's, it's it's it calls for a higher level of observation which is exercised when you choose to just make it a lifestyle practice because it's so simple it's just saying okay i grew up doing everything right-handed all all mmd is is a lifestyle choice that says i'm gonna learn how to do it lefty in that mirrored motion so reading and writing of course mirrored like it's so cool the stuff that happens when you're on that tip, when you're doing that kind of stuff. And we know like it takes a while as adults. I mean, I'm 39. I've been practicing it. I got into exclusive switch skateboarding 15 years ago, but then the bulk of my MMD, I started practicing it 10 years ago with the real mirrored reading and writing stuff starting like two and three years ago. So I really love how you're doing the mirrored uh, reading more. Like, of course we did the mirrored writing it for, since a long time ago. But it took me a long time. So I was a lefty person and my left hand was not serving me optimally, mm -hmm. getting injured. And I just didn't have the skills that I wanted. And I was convinced by Michael that if I really pumped up my right hand, started playing a lot more ambidextrous tennis, that I would become more skillful mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, and truly. I took, yeah, and I took that to heart. And, and so that I actually stopped using my left hand to play tennis and even writing for 10 years. Easy. 10. Yeah, I did 10 yeah. years of, of going back to college and riding with my right hand, playing tennis matches with my right hand. And I experienced incredible success. Uh, not Nothing like NBA level or anything like that, but really great personal development. And mm -hmm. I have quite like the range of different skills for example I, I, hey one thing we got to talk about well, since we're right there about different skills something that's been around but becoming bilingual yeah is, i know you're working to learn spanish dude i learned spanish mostly in my 30s yeah me too i i think i have actually learned spanish now like i speak fluent spanish you do mm -hmm. see sí, yo hablo espanol pues si quieres podemos platicar ahorita Vas a agregar los subtítulos ahora? Vas a editar. Claro, claro. Uh, yeah, no, no, les, uh, les decimos, oye, pon los, uh, los, el modo subtitulado. Y tal vez es, uh, va a ser, creo. Vamos a ver. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to write out all the different subtitles. Hey, okay, that. then forget it. Maybe we should just speak English. Yeah. I don't think we have a big Spanish speaking following, but that could be a goal in the future. Because I do speak, I understand what you're saying, and uh, I mean, I like to meet people strictly in Spanish now. I can do that. It's great. I love it. I have so much fun with it. I uh, I work as a bilingual tour guide in the city. Um, I use a little bit of my other job, but I try to just stay with it. Read my news. I listen to the Washington Post podcast uh, in Espanol. It's called Wapo, which is just mm -hmm. awesome, and they're really good as far as because you get different dialects. Um, it's really, really a, a great resource of the Washington Post podcast. Um, thinking really what else? I don't know. Um, it's really kind of all, I've had like a good solid six plus years of like really, really solid Mexican immersion between both Mexico and the US, so. So that's really cool. So these are the types of things the mirror motor, What's it called? <laughs> mirror movement development. MMA. Okay, there we go. Mirror movement development. Like, it's a, it's, it's got this uh, geometric 
it, it's it's more it. it's more specific. You know about the well the ambidextral culture society. When they were teaching people ambidexterity at the turn of the century in the Victorian era, they weren't incorporating the idea of like mirrored reading and mirrored writing. It was just one direction with your left or and your right hand. No, I'm really so I I mean, I don't know if I've articulated how I feel about it, but your work has been really great because I've been basically isolated. I don't ask Michael for inspiration. Like we did our thing back in the day and then I went on my own. Okay. And I've been on my own for a long time and I always believed in this stuff. And well, you, you can you, you can do you can do MMD by yourself. You can also do it in group, which is why I have MMD Philly. But like it, it's 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 the easiest thing to practice by yourself. It, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to convince other people to practice. <laughs> no, oftentimes, like all the people who I wrote about in Big Three MMD, they all had something that started it. Where some people it's clearer than others, but like Thomas Jefferson, he broke his right wrist, so he wanted to continue writing. He started doing it lefty and he did it for another 40 years. And I guarantee that Franklin inspired Jefferson to do that. And it, because of like working here in Philly, I work at the Benjamin Franklin Museum as well. So I know so much about him. I had to do so much research on his because in his autobiography, he never mentions being ambidextrous. He only, he did the mirror reading for 30 years. And then he wrote that essay, Petition of the Left Hand, which is so creative. It's I, I just his writing style is so so cool. So I was gonna say that it's kind of like the whole thing is kind of a mentality, and and that's why I like to call it shared dominance because this idea of kind of like kind of showing vulnerability. You really have to start over to use a left hand, and you have to nourish it. Yeah. For years and years. Yeah, and eventually you're dual dominant, but for a while there, it's just kind of like this nourishing process that for me, takes, 100%. I think it takes years. And so I've done a lot of music training. I have a two-year degree in music. I have the bachelor's in mathematics. I've been in the military. Hey, just yesterday, I got a private pilot's license. Like that's where I'm at. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm having like, I, so yesterday was like the best day in my life, okay? So, and then I'm meeting you today, which is great because I want to tell you- Oh, and then I, you started celebrating with push-ups. <laughs> I've been doing push-ups every man. day for uh, 170. You're going, you're going to a thousand. Yes, sir. Very cool, dude. I think it's yeah, cool. It's I love that out. at the end you pick up the trash. That's so, yeah. that's so G, dude. <laughs> yeah, because I want to clean. I, I just joke around and say I'm not really joking, but I want to pick up all the trash in the whole world. So after the years and years of just so, who I, what happened was I started writing the right hand and really dedicated myself to it. I went back to school, so it's a different going to school and getting a job is kind of a different brain center than being an artist, kind of being a free thinker and really a free mover. I think when someone gets in touch with their mirror dominant skills, they might move differently through life. Uh, like traveling to Mexico is a great example. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, it has a lot to offer, many benefits to the Mexican culture. And uh, I think that someone who's practicing MMD might have the mentality to dive into that because they have to nourish that side of themselves. It takes a lot of years of nourishing and nourishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope that for people who are seeking physical rehabilitation that they realize the benefits. That was the major thing for me. And it sounds like for you too, with your shoulder, you know, it's the, you're realigning the body when you do MMD. And it is not easy, dude. Like the brain, the brain weighs what 1.5 pounds. Um, so which is like three percent of the average adult human body weight, but it burns like 20% of the body's energy. It's the craziest organ in the body. And when you're doing MMD, even on the most basic to the most macro scale, that sense of weirdness is your less dominant side is working to get blood flow to the other side. And it feels weird, it feels strange, it feels like uh. And, and for a lot of us, we're just thinking, I already got this good hand right here and no one else around me is practicing this. So what, what does it matter? <laughs> because it takes, like we said, like years, it's years before you can really send some major results. This is Casa Dora, mi compañera de cuarto. Hey, <laughs> de Tijuana. Hey, relax. You don't want to be on TV? ¿Cuál fue su nombre? 
Uh, su nombre es Casadora. Casadora. Yes. Yeah. Casadora, yeah. Yeah, her and her sister Gitana. Gitana. They're my Mexican roommates here. So um, <laughs> I give me a 20 second pause. I'm going to get a, uh, um, a lamp from right over here. I'm going to put it right here. So no problem. I don't get too dark here for us. But Vaughn, I like what you're saying, man. It's um, it's always cool to meet another ambidexter. You know, that's. I haven't even got there where I'm really going with this, bro. Where I'm really going is that after, let's see, 20 years, my brother. Yeah. You know, I started writing the right hand and, and, and pondering Michael Avery's ideas mm -hmm. for, for the last, I, with 20, starting 20 years ago. And so what happened was I went back to school and then because I'm a tournament chess player, but not all the time. A lot of times I go years without playing tournament chess. I entered a chess tournament and won $20,000. Wow. So that's where that's I dope, saying, dude. Okay, I think we all agree that to play chess, you have to use your brain. Okay. And my brain was really working well for that tournament. And I won. And so that set me off. Okay. This is something that's really important. And I, I went back to Michael Avery in my twenties and got all his little exercises and really tried to do it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then it was just too hard. It's like, we, what we were, our idea is, and this is something I'm still believing can happen. And you're just doing great with this. And that's where I'm going with my story is, uh, is we really want to share this with people because it, they're scared to try something new. They feel uncomfortable switching it around. They don't want to look yeah. stupid, vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thankfully I'm meeting some people here in Philly who are starting to get into it. My one buddy Jeff, he is killing it with the handrail walking. Yeah, he's he's a he's a fellow meetup guy, and uh, he leads a cool meetup here in Philly, uh, 20s and 30s social group. And my neighbor uh, Q, he also has been uh, doing it with his friends. Um, I think her name is Liz, and uh, yeah, they they really enjoy it. They're they're familiar with that slack with the concept of slacklining. But then I told him, I'm like, yo, I love rail walking because you don't have to set up a slack line anywhere. Handrails are everywhere in a lot of places and they're all different. They've all got kinks. They've got gaps. They curve. Some are high, some are low They're, you know, and you could do like spins. You could do, you can walk them backwards and stuff. I'm waiting to find some, uh, there's some, some heads I've seen on Instagram who just kill it in the handstand scene. Where they just do the free, like I, I know you're practicing your handstands. I've, I've seen you handstand, doing yeah. that. The just that straight up and down, your body is locked and you're you're doing a thing. There's a, a guy on Instagram, Miguel Handstand. He's incredible. I want to see somebody one day incorporate handrail walking with like a cartwheel into it, where someone actually does a cartwheel on a horizontal rail. It's um, I just, yeah. I think about this stuff. I, I just try to do like, I have a lot of fun on like the big rails because I grew up skateboarding so many years. So, you know, I have one here in Philly that I'm looking to do. It's a 42 stair triple kink, I think. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's taking me like three minutes to walk down it. But um, yeah, it's, it's such a fun sport. You know? I want to get into that. That's right on my alley. It's challenging and there's another girl on Instagram named Stephanie Miller. I'll send her, her I'll send you her link. Please. Uh, she's a, her profile link. She's amazing uh, with like handstands and all that stuff. Uh, what I learned from her videos, it just came back to me that relates to walking on the handrails, is she does scary things like she'll have like a helicopter like dragging, you know, and she'll be like hanging from a helicopter, you know, without attachment, she's just holding on to something. Or she'll climb trees or <laughs> she'll do crazy stuff. She'll climb a cliff and she's like hanging off the cliff. And uh, what I realize is that what she's doing. I'd be doing, afraid to like hang out with her. I don't know. <laughs> I'd be like, you want to go do what? Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's not the only type of stuff she does. It sounds crazy. like Danny Way. That's great. But what I think it, it does, and it relates to walking the handrails, is when you're doing something slightly dangerous, it, it releases chemicals in your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It requires that extra edge of focus because you always fall off a handrail, but I never, if you do it right, when you, when you handrail walk, 
Uh, the goal is so that when you fall off, your hand is the very first thing that touches the rail after your feet leave the rail. And then you just catch yourself on the rail and you let yourself down. There's there's zero abrasion. It's, it's kind of like how guys like Tony Hawk can skate into their mid 50s vert because they know how to fall properly. They fall on their knees, on their knee pads, and they just slide down the thing. It's the same as that concept. It's a, I mean, I started handrail walking when I was 35. Never even thought about it before that. And no one taught me it. No one, you know, but I think, I think skateboarding and slacklining for so many years just put the two and two together. Yeah. So as, yeah, as someone develops this mirror motor development, basically nor the normal person is going to be tapping into their, their right brain through their left hand. And of course, yeah, that, that's the layman science of it. Yeah, 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 the layman science. I, I, I don't necessarily, uh, I don't rely on that science as much as just, it's an interesting analogy for the body to the brain connection. That kind of, of course. Helps. Of course. Yeah. And so as people develop these skills, they get more self confident and they try new things. And so it really affects uh, the practitioner's life over the long term because they're going to try this rail walking stuff or they're going to mm -hmm. start doing some street art, which is kind of strange. The chalk behavior. art is so much fun. I got yelled at yesterday by a guy down at Scranton for doing it, which, which never happens. It was like a really bizarre people i meet they really like it um even the spot that i did it at at uh, adezo cafe but like here in philly um people really like it they're really receptive of it um so it's not spray paint you know it, it's kids chalk but the uh i get the, it the act of the symmetry of it is just so much fun it's so it's just it's 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 a lot of fun and and i never know what my art is going to end up looking like because i always just start doing strokes and then it turns into something and you kind of step back and it's so it's a really fun process so my buddy jeff i got him in so he really he he likes uh he likes doing it so it's it's cool i just started this meetup group like three months ago so it's it's still new it's fresh but um yeah i'm digging it now my book is done so i can Hang on, be, be more social. Yeah, technically I have copies of my book and they're available, but I'm still going to, I didn't, I don't have an editor, so I'm still. Um, Do you have correct. a PDF of it? Send me a PDF of it and I'll mirror it and I'll print it like that. And okay. then I'll read it. Yeah, please. Okay, yeah, I can send you something like that. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, send me some, send me, Diego Irigoyen did that for me. For for his cool. book, for creative brain yeah. training. So oh my you God, for it's pure so brain cool. Training. Yeah, I just, that's it, dude. I don't read I books anymore in the traditional direction. Like I, I can, no problem, but I don't want to because the benefits of MMD are just so fun. So <laughs> you're the man. This it, is it so takes. cool. So, so let me catch up. So well, this is what happened to me. So I, at one point, me and Michael Avery just kind of burned out on trying to make it happen because it's just not that easy to start an organization or a business or anything around uh, these brain training techniques. No, but so, you just inform people for, for here are health benefits, but I get you. Yeah. Well, this was 12 years ago. I was younger or something or more than 12 years ago. And so I just joined the military. I was like, you know what? I've dedicated like three years of my life to doing this and it does work. I know it works, but it's not working for me right now. I got you. So, yeah. So I, uh, kind of was like ready to to even question things that I'm so confident. And that's why I have a book of, in, called Pure Brain Training because I've really questioned it. Like, you know, is this even the right way to go or whatever? Maybe it's like sure. later time. Just letting it, the question sink in. Because a lot of people but, don't seem to get it at first. A lot <laughs> of average people, if I talk to them long enough, they get it. But Franklin, he has a quote, uh, a learned blockhead is a greater blockhead than an ignorant one. And I meet a lot of people in academia who like, I've emailed universities and like, you know, I really don't yet hear back from a lot of them. Cause it's a major shift for institutions to make. Like, yeah, let's teach all of our students to read and write mirrored. Like no parents I are asking for that. Your, I love your optimism. Like, so I'm here to support you because you are awesome with how you just, you're just saying it the way you see it. You're calling a spade a spade. The way I, I've had a lot of time thinking about it and just writing and researching this book and hearing perspectives and just my own, my own advancement as a practitioner. Like 
I'm 39. I know there's people who are my age and older who want to feel like their best years aren't behind them. Like your body can be realigned through MMD. It takes a while as an adult, but every moment you choose to do it, there's just benefits. I it did time. support you, man. So this is, this is my little spiel. So then after the Air Force, I started getting the math degree because I had the GI Bill. So I had work right. as a maintenance person and I was working the right hand. I wasn't really using my left hand. So when I was scrubbing, I was scrubbing with the right hand. I kept it going because it was just healthy. I knew it was the right thing for me like yeah. that. But I wasn't like planning on sharing it too much. Then when I was doing the math degree and you, there's so much time to reflect in a math class just about everything. It's a really thoughtful degree to pursue. I just started thinking, you know what? Uh, some of these mathematicians spent their whole life just trying to prove a theorem. Actually, thousands of mathematicians spent years just yeah. working in pure math, trying to get new theorems going and stuff. And, and a lot of them, they're not famous. You know? And I'm like, if they can spend that many years trying to define a circle or trying to rewrite you know, pi or something, then uh, we can do this pure brain training stuff. I call, I call it pure brain training. Part of it is being ambitious. Other thing is just memorizing stuff or just realizing that you got to exercise your brain like way more than society thinks that we should. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I, I the, the thing that I like about MMD is it's it's just focusing on one thing. It's not like, like for example, like Lavery, he, he's huge in the hammers and I know you're big in them. And I know EBA is big in them. And I know Diego's big in them. I never got the bug for the hammers. I do ping pong dancing and I love it. I've tried the hammers, never got it. I, I mean, I can return to it, but I, between my chalk art, between the wall ball, between the lawn boarding, ping pong dancing, skate yoga, like I have so many fun activities I do. I'm not looking. Well, I yeah. really love that. And so when I talk to people about my book and the exercises, which are pretty much what we just mentioned, like the riding mirror image, the hammers and memorizing something. That's, those are the three exercises. Yeah. Um, and they, they do all help become, to become ambidextrous. You're doing stuff, so you're getting it done. Well, and, and the memorizing stuff, that's something that just comes as a natural byproduct because brain specials have known for centuries that when you practice both sides, you're sending blood flow more to both sides of the brain. So all the, the good things of the brain theoretically would be increased as long, I think as long as you're doing pure MMD, um, then that's the case. I think when um, the ambidextral culture society was doing what they were doing in the Victorian era and having everybody go with both hands in the same one direction, I think the spatial awareness system of the human bilateral body is kind of confused because I think it knows instinctively that's made for mirror movement, which is why so many kids experiment with mirror writing as they're growing up. My aunt, who's the editor of my book, she's a, a native lefty and she experimented with mirror writing as a kid. No one taught her it. Same thing with Paul McCartney. Um, it's, we're silly to not, but again, how many people are having this conversation? No parents are asking for this at school. Um, this is something, it's a, it's a slow cooking uh, thing to get people into a practice like this because it's not like a thing of do MMD for 90 days and you're going to be so ripped and blah 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 blah. Your, your head's going to explode if you do pure MMD for the first 90 days of your life. The, the brain is the most unique organ and that it burns the most energy. So theoretically, it should have to rest the most, which is why this practice takes 10 years for the average adult. I see. I love that insight. I think that's a little bit of a uh... Encouragement to meditate or something. <laughs> you know, just share what comes to my mind. Again, I, believe, I, I, I meditate meditating? on this a lot as with writing the book, you know, so. You know, like, like uh, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you is what I was trying to say. Like, and the idea of meditation or something is, is part of a healthy kind of lifestyle is to be just understanding the strategic rest. That, yes. Diego Irigoyen talks a lot about meditation in creative brain okay. training and, and okay. breathing, proper breathing exercises. Yeah, his and book is great. Things, so, I just, so I worked really hard to build this palette of skills, right? Like the math degree, you know, I can draw and paint and all that Well, stuff. it sounds like you're a polymath, dude. Like that's a major um, hallmark of MMD, in my opinion. Uh, if you look at the lives of the people from history who are on that spectrum, you know, but that doesn't mean that there's not, you know, people who are polymaths who are maybe 
natively strong that, who basically don't practice MMD. I, I don't know enough about all of the polymaths in existence, but it's you're increasing your brain power. You know, it was of amazing. Course you're gonna be able to learn more. <laughs> your book was amazing. So fast forward, I when COVID hit, I wrote my own book because I even three years ago I was feeling pretty accomplished in Spanish. Now it's different. Like I really actually speak Spanish, but I was, people thought I spoke Spanish back then, but now I actually speak Spanish. Anyways, I had the confidence. Yeah. I had the math degree. I had the Spanish. I played, did you know, I even play guitar mirror, mirror upside down. Did you, I bought a ukulele with, cause I want to start doing that. I've never played a stringed instrument and I want so badly to learn ukulele. Um, you can do cool. it. So you play it switch. So how does it feel? Uh, well, I'm doing that like nourishing thing. I've, I've been nourishing the lefty guitar for like two years mm -hmm. and I already play righty, I would say very proficiently. Nice. But I don't play righty right now because I'm just nourishing that lefty. Anyways, all those accomplishments, wrote the book and, you know, really excited to share my book with uh, people that are interested in kind of just like getting that extra boost yeah. because, you know, it helps. It's helped me win some chess tournaments. It's helped me get through school. It's helped me get through the military. I'm 37. And right now I think it's obvious that I'm even not at my prime. It's pretty obvious I'm not even at my prime. How good does that feel, dude? <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Kind of, kind of. Um, yeah, dude. Um, I have a lot good. to learn. I have a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like longboarding, so dude, I don't know when I'll stop longboarding. Because theoretically, ah. if I do it always MMD, I'm never going to have body misalignment issues. Theoretically, we'll, we'll ultimately see. I've been doing it for 27 years so far, so it's, you know. What your book has taught me is to, you know, remember human potential is just so much greater than our human imagination. So that includes yeah. you. You're probably not past your theoretical prime if we really, if you practice it, like, keep sticking with it. It's it's just a lifestyle choice. It's again yeah. like, I just feel good. I, and, no, and no one's perfect, but like for example, a healthy diet. I eat pretty healthy because it gives me the energy to do what I enjoy doing. Now I uh, I drink beer. I think all things in moderation. My body feels. I don't feel inhibited by those things to be able to go long distance longboard to do ambi ball, to go do chalk R and, and just have a body that feels more complete and put together. You know, it's a, I, it just, it's, it's incredible. So what happened was, I don't know how we got in contact. Somehow you found me on Facebook. Is that correct? Or did I find you? Um, originally I heard of you when I was researching everything for my book and you came up like every now and then. And, uh, and then I think I, I friend requested you. And then, you know, every now and then I would check uh, your posts and stuff. And uh, I was like, cool. Like, you know, he's doing it too. Well, and, and, then, and then you thrilled, contacted Jim. me. I am thrilled because after years, 20 years of work, I've been working on my own version of this stuff mm -hmm. for 20 years to finish. My book is pretty much finished. It's a great read. I love my, I, I'm going to reread it to edit it more just to just get commas or like misspellings. Totally. Yeah, just miss words, really just miss words. Uh, I'm going to keep editing it, but it's pretty much done anyway. And uh, it's that's done, just did the private pilot thing all in the same time. And just, uh, you know, I read your book for the last few weeks and it was like, finally, I'm reading stuff that just makes sense. <laughs> like your book, I'm like, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Well, what do you mean by that? Because for anybody who's watching that, like, well, like a specific, like even like okay. a three points, like what was the coolest thing about it? I, I don't know. So this well, let me just say what makes sense to me. And I'm pretty sure this is what your book's about. Uh, when I was in the math degree saying, okay, it was very pensive. I just, you mentioned this, this, I mentioned a paragraph in this, like this in my book and yours has also mentioned this as well about ambidexterity. It's like ambidexterity increases your chances of survival in the natural world. 100%. Yeah, it, it definitely adds to longevity. And of course, no one's perfect, like an ambidextrous can have an accident, you know, whatever, but like still for, for longevity in general. Yeah, because you're realigning the body. The body is meant for that mirror movement. And that's it's meant over to be the aligned. Term. And okay, so that's over the long term. I would, I would, my, I completely agree. That's also the same point almost, but in the timing, just catching yourself though with yeah. your left hand, 
catching yourself with your left foot. So I'm doing I'm doing the quadradextrous stuff. So oh okay. It is a bit you are too because you're walking on the rails and you're doing a skateboard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing the rail a- walking is a dude. If I, if I walk on a rail, sometimes I'll feel like wow, I just ca- I just came back from like a chiropractor adjustment. It's it, it, it is cool. the most symmetric MMD activity under the sun because in order to maintain that forward momentum, like you have to equally exercise both sides of your body when you're on a round rail. It has to be a round rail because there's a fine line of the center over the top of a round rail. And if you're walking a rail, it, it, it really helps to have a bar underneath that rail. Just like if you're shooting a rifle, you have uh, the site is the triangulation. You have that bar underneath and it's like a triangulation while you're taking steps. It's I, I, I've produced a, a video or two or whatever about it, but- I'm gonna learn it because I'm all it's about great. Uh, strengthening my core. The, even walking on the rails is gonna help me do the handstands because it's just, all that body awareness. All that. Well, the key, and I know you do a lot of running, the key to that bilateral alignment when you're running or walking or swimming or cycling or rail walking or ambi wall wall, um, you want to you want to exhale on your odd ended step. So either every third, fifth, seventh, or ninth step, you want to exhale because when you inhale, that air adds as a body of cushion within the body. And this is a very subtle thing. But again, if you're running and walking for long distances over time, you will feel much more additional longevity when you exhale on those third, fifth, seventh, and ninth uh, steps. And uh, your body, when you start doing it, it feels a certain flow with it. So you're not really as conscious of doing it as much as you are feeling, okay, I do you know, two raises on this side and then two raises on that side. And then on that next step after it's an exhale. And so you get into this thing. Um, so that's the way that when, when we do our MMD fill events where we're going on a hike, um, I'll always tell people like that's that's how you do it with MMD. And same thing with front packing. Front packing is like a, a, like a cool, like a reversal is a cousin of MMD, just like an inversion. So front packing for a spinal. Just carry the backpack on your front. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if you've grown up carrying a backpack on your back, you will feel remarkable when you start carrying it on the front because you've had so many years. This is what I'm talking about, Jim. So after years of, I've done the front packing, by the way. Oh, well, comfort- there you go. So you know it. Yeah, it's a comfort zone challenge. But so that's what I'm saying. This stuff just makes sense to me. One, okay, the symmetry makes sense in nature. Uh, when a lion's attacking you, he's not always going to attack you from your dominant side. He might attack you from your other side and catch you off guard. But if you're a true ambidexter, you're just gonna, you know, pop it right in the nose. Maybe, hopefully. Totally, yeah. To, hopefully. <laughs> I'm just saying you're it, it would be you would have a better chance of survival for holding, you know, you're climbing a tree and you start slipping, but you can grab on with your, your non dominant Totally, totally, totally. So I mean, life and death situation. I'm going for the dominant swing, you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> you know, MMD is a lifestyle practice, like that's what it's about. You know, like. Like when I'm doing chalk art, I'm not always using my left hand. I'm using a lot of my right hand. I'll tend to use more left, but you know, like to only ever do it on one side and never, although for skateboarding, I was doing exclusively switch for years before I went back to regular. So that that's what I call practicing shared dominance right there. Where you're just like nourishing this little baby that, that needs to learn to fly. And it takes a long time and you kind of sacrifice the feeling like, okay, I kind of have like professional skills on the right hand of guitar. So I can play the songs. I can do the improv. I'm really, really proficient at that. But I play lefty. And then so I'm kind of fiddling around. Like I'm not nailing the parts, but like, you know what? I'm not just going to, every time someone says, hey, play something, switch to the right and going to revert back to my mm-hmm. comfort zone. My, my idea is shared dominance is you kind of like have to get out of your comfort zone sometimes to get these high level skills. One hundred percent. One of uh, Franklin said, uh, basically said, uh, "What? No gain without pain." I think is what he said. So, so, so okay. The no first pain, thing no gain. Book, yeah. Uh, the same. first thing about your book is that uh, the basic concept to me makes so much sense, and it's very strange that it was like I was fighting an uphill battle this whole time. How did you feel reading it mirrored? So that's that's another thing I'll, I'll get to that in a <laughs> sec. Okay, but what what made sense about your book was the first thing about symmetry and how that really and you mentioned those points. You literally talked about symmetry. Aristotle said it was one of the three pillars of beauty. Mm-hmm, symmetry, and then uh, well, it's really cool that you did at least some pretty good research. And I put it in the disclaimer. A lot of it was because this isn't taught in school. 
a, a lot of this, but you do have healthcare experts, you do have neuro and kinesiology experts who talk about how important it is to symmetrically exercise both sides of the body um, as to, for, for longevity. And of course, like I cite them in the book, um, but a lot of it is also just has been steeped in like the ambidextral culture society was a great example. It never ultimately caught on. Um, and even when I was doing this before I ever coined the term MMD, I was telling people about how I was learning ambidexterity and I would get confused looks because you could tell so many people looked like they knew that they should know exactly what that means because they've heard it before, but it wasn't totally clear to them. Whereas if I, I, I started telling people I practice MMD and a lot of people were like, what is that? And mirror like movement that. development. And, the they, and they'd be like, okay, what is that? And then I would say, if you, I grew up righty, I now do everything lefty in mirrored motion. And, and then they'd be like, oh, okay. You know, and but, they, but they're at least like in the gate to understanding what it basically is. And I'll just tell them like, you see the hands, you see that, you see that. You look in the mirror every day, you see an eyeball, nostrils, yeah. mouth, ears, this. This thing is made for equal movement on both sides. The skeleton also. But dude, the, the viscera is all over the place. The organs, they're everywhere. Just like in a car, when you open up a hood, the, the, the organs, the, the inner components, they're everywhere. But if you slice the human body right down the middle, both sides are going to weigh the same. Unless if, if you have the average design human body. Um, as an organic machine, do I think if aliens came here and they asked us some questions, I, I guarantee one of their burning questions would be like, why do you guys all only just do things like one hand? 90% of all of you humans are just like, I'm only going to use this right? They'd be so like, what is wrong this, with all of you? Why do you do This is called you, common sense. So like, why you, do you do that? You know, so just, do you not know how much longer you would live? How much feeling you for it because you're exercising both sides of your brain and your body? Like, that's what this organic machine is made for. So, so hopefully people work. will get it with the book. I mean, again, it's, I think the big thing has been that lack of reading direction. 99.999% of all the reading we've ever done has been in one direction. The brain is totally asymmetric as a result of that, but you would reverse that through MMD. You're um, the man, Jim. So those are my three points. I'll just summarize. One, the, the common sense is there where well, everything you're talking about uh, with the symmetry and the aliens, that argument is great. And that's been around for 20 years. And I'm just so glad At you're least. sticking to it. The well, thing. I just, like, what's my other choice? Like, lie? I mean, I just, um, you know, <laughs> you, you, you know, if you love a restaurant, like, you'll feel great going online and writing a five-star review, you know? Like, that's just kind of it. It's when I see people that's and they're like, oh, did. man, I used to skate, but I can't anymore. And so whatever. And I want to shake and be like, that's not true. You have an average design human body. You can learn both sides. But most people are like, yeah, maybe you can learn that. But I'm old, you know, whatever. And I'm just, all right. Yeah. Have a great so day. I pretty much dedicated I'll wave at them like this. this. Have that's a cool. great day. <laughs> so when I was reading that type of stuff, I was like, this is so cool that uh, this guy is like sticking to it. And he didn't make it too complicated. It's a simple argument. It's a simple set of arguments. I just want to share the stories of the people who are doing it because to them it's simple too. So okay, that's number one. The number two is I really liked how you did some historical research. It's just cool, you know. I'm not a big. I'm a nerd. huge history nerd. Yeah, Benjamin Franklin, all these things. I don't. I'm not a big history guy. But I. By like way, I give reading. the best ever tour of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Tijuana, Mexico. If you want tours of any of those places, I'm just saying. Yeah, let's do it. Vamos. I'm a big Great. history so, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Orale. So, Orale, okay. mijo. <laughs> so, so that I love the history aspect. Uh, and like Leonardo da Vinci, Benjamin Franklin, and Lord Ben Powell. Very cool. And how about that statue in Juarez? You saw him in Juarez. I've never seen that statue. I'm dying to know why he's there. I mean, not why. Like, I understand. I mean, he, the Boy Scouts is international everywhere. I think in over 180 countries or not. Yeah. Like, a lot is. of countries. And Mexico, I've seen scouts in Mexico. So, you know, it would make it just as much sense that we have a statue of him here in the States. Yeah, but just what, what serendipity and synchronicity. Now, what was the post? quote, though, that you, you mentioned about him? Oh, did I put it on the post? I don't, I, I didn't see it. I looked for it for a second. I didn't see it. Was there uh, a quote? So, I don't remember quoting. I, I do, Okay, so that's in my stories. Okay, so what it was was Lord Baden Powell is saying that 
it's in your book, so I quoted for you. So it's in the pages that describe his life. Uh, he he just said, I don't consider a soldier thoroughly trained. You're a military guy. You know exactly what that's about, of course. Yeah, yeah. I was I, I was yeah. joking around with my parents one time because I shot all right, even though I'm a lefty. I was shooting right in the military just for the couple times that we did the shooting practice. And uh, I was joking around with my dad. I'm like, because I'm a super soldier. <laughs> 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 but like, I mean, and in the end, I am. Now I am a super soldier because I really just stuck with it. Uh, you know, I can't I can't think of any super soldier chess whiz dude learning Spanish in his 30s guy. That last boom. part I got too, but you know, uh, those oh. other two, no, I, I, I don't play chess. Yeah. But you know, I'm not a military guy, but but again, like that's it, this whole practice is a spectrum, you know what I mean? It's and like anything, it's not everything, but it definitely does hone in the ability to acquire skill in a more versatile variety of things like with the boy scouts his merit badges all the merit badges the symmetric knot that he tied the symmetric logo the fact that he signed both hands dude i was in boy scouts all of my life i'm an eagle scout i had like 60 merit badges so when i picked up that book ambit dexterity and i read the introduction and it said lord robert baden powell i was like get out of here, dude. You, you did, I you knew know who what? that I guy was, back. and I you could did not great believe research. it. Hold on. You did great research your book. So that's what, so, so the things I like about your book. One, it just makes sense. The common sense aspect is spot on, okay? Number yes. two, you did great research, man. Like, so I'm reading this. I'm just thrilled. I'm like, this is cool. Wow, I didn't a lot know. of it was just websites, you know? So I make that mention in the disclaimer. A lot of it are just websites, but I try to really only put something if it's been mentioned like a couple places, like Benjamin, like real. if you just if you it's Google real. like famous history, like historic ambidextrous people, all these like Franklin pops up a bunch of times, Da Vinci, Mozart, Hendrix, um, MC Escher, Nikola Tesla. I mean, all of those guys. So I, isn't that interesting? Like all the people we love. So check it. <laughs> I yeah. love MC Escher's art since I was I was like two years old. You know, like as soon as his I art's saw, incredible. Yeah, it, it, I love his it. height. Is he's. I don't, I don't know if I want to say he's like a modern Da Vinci, but his spatial awareness is, it's obvious he's an ambidexter. Interesting, yeah. So the third thing that I loved about your book, which maybe is the most important, is that you took all that information, all this stuff that you're talking about, you take it so to heart, and you actually printed the lefty version right in there with the righty. That I had says, to. I had that to. That says everything, bro. That yeah. says it all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, when, when I was originally uh, conceptualizing the format and I was thinking, oh, you open from the back and everything is then mirrored and then you open from the front and then everything is righty. But then I was thinking, if I do it that way, there's probably gonna be a lot of people who will never even mess with trying to read it mirrored unless there's mirrored scripts on the side of every page. And I know that that increases the readership of it. I've had a few people tell me like, yeah, I'm about practicing it. It's really interesting. It definitely feels weird, but I can tell it's, it's doing something good. I was actually, I was contacted by one guy from, um, a guy, Stephen from um, uh, Kansas City. And he told me he read through it. This is only going to make me sound like a big headed ego dude, but yeah. this, this is the only other interview that I, or the only other uh, email that I got from somebody since the book came out like two months ago. But He's been an ambidexter practicing for like the last 10 years. He came across my book on Amazon. He bought it and he goes, dude, I read through it three times. I read through a traditional mirrored and inverted. He flipped it upside down and he read it upside down too. So we had a really interesting talk and uh, um, wish it was, uh, it will be recorded, but you know, I'm glad that you and I are, are chatting because you're saying a lot of the same stuff he was saying too. This is, this is a really, this is a real treat for me to chat with you, Vaughn, on all this because the moment I was looking at all of your stuff, I was like, yeah, he, he gets it too. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm definitely sending you the PDF version of my book so that yeah. you can flip it around to the mirror image. And I want to read my own book, Mirror Image, too. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working so, on, yeah. uh, I don't know if I sent you the photo of it. I think I did of the next Mirror Image book that I'm doing. Let's see it. Um, it is, oh, I'm so excited for this because. Because I work at the Benjamin Franklin Museum, I see all the different books that basically come out about Franklin. Not everyone, but like all the major ones. And they all showcase Franklin as an adult. 
my cover has Franklin as a 16 year old kid in the very middle of it. Nice. I love this. Uh, I love how you're just going to keep pushing the mirror uh, reading. So well, dude, it, it's, it's, it, it's, again, it's all about MMD, but again, in the way that like you understand is what Lavery's talking about. It's I'm uh, like MMD is MMD is timeless. I, I did not invent MMD. I might've coined that, that sigla that's you know uh, not acronym but you know the no acronym it's one of those mm -hmm. moments i could better remember in spanish but like it's been known as ambidexterity for centuries i'm not the first to do it you know so it's uh it's cool knowing there's other people who have done it and there's other people that are doing it and there's other people who will be doing it but there that's i flipped it back around again for there we go oh now for me it's now mirror image autobiograph uh auto Biography of Benjamin Franklin. Mirror yeah, but that's edition. that's Franklin right there in the very center. And what he's doing right there, he's pulling from, if I go that way, you can see a little bit better. He's off on the side and he's yeah, what, pulling from um, the mirrored key sets. So all of those oh letters yeah. he's picking out, they're all mirror cast. They're all they're all cast backwards so that you print in that normal direct, normal quote unquote traditional direction. So I'm really excited about it. I'm almost done. I'd like to have it out within like the next week or two, hopefully. Oh, cool. Cool. So, Sweet. Yeah. I, you know what? So there's going to be mirrored text in that one as well. All of it's mirrored, the, except for like the first four pages are traditional direction, just explaining why is this in mirror? Why should you read it? Um, so then, then like I'm the going to be flipping, but then if I start at the beginning, I'll be flipping normal. No, reading. no, that, no, you just flip the book over. It's a normal sized book. It, it's the autobiography. So, so I, at, at a moment within those first four pages, I then end with like big bold points with asterisks. Now flip to the back and begin reading. And I tell people you read from right to left. So the whole thing, everything that Benjamin Franklin wrote, it's all in mirror direction. Everything. So yeah, Jim, all... this, this, this tells you so much about kind of your strength and contribution is that this is like the thing that we've all been resisting, like all of us, I, you know, to just really say like, hey, mirror reading is cool and we should make it like a mainstream thing. Like, and I think you can dude, do it. So many people want to improve their brains and bodies. Why not? It's the easiest thing, dude. It is easy. It doesn't require money. It's, I mean, you can, of course, there, there's certainly products and you know, there's things like that that you can get, but otherwise, like, this doesn't cost anything to do. You know, yeah. it's, I haven't, I know people who own gyms won't want to hear this, but I haven't had a gym membership in like two or three years and I don't need one. I have enough fun just doing MMD. Like I get a wall, I do wall ball, I walk on rails, I skate, I bike. It's all stuff that you can just do in the street. Um, it's great. And the mirror reading, you mirror read. That's my man. That mirror read, dude. Th thanks to Dr. Sheila Robinson. She changed the game for mirror reading. If you just go to mirrorread.com, you can download the um, the browser tool where you just click the button for mirror and it flips everything in mirror direction on your web browser. I use it all the time. Um, of course, not 100%. I, I, of course, still have that, a lot of regular that's reading. Your big if, if I'm reading for a little bit, I want to do that. Yeah. Oh, no. Those three things that I said. The logic of it, you really stick to it. You, you don't lose the logic of it. You did some really cool research that's interesting. And then you actually did the follow through by printing things mirror image and say, read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I am, through. you know, the thing that definitely makes my ego feel the biggest is knowing that this is the, the world's first bioscriptal book like that. It's There's never been one before this in, in our lifetime that I've ever known of. Uh, the ancient Greeks, again, they would have written like that with Bostrophodon. Um, so, you know, we're not the first humans to ever do anything, of course, mirrored image like that. Um, and then you got Da Vinci and, of course, Franklin. And so it's, it's it, but, but in this case, it is the first that's like new to the game that you can just hop on Amazon and buy. So, Heck yeah. yeah. And you're living, you're in the flesh, bro. You're in the flesh. There it is. So I know this yeah, looks yeah, gotta, normal, but that's obviously the back, uh, the back side of So for people watching. I got it right here, dog. There you go. Yeah, I loved it, bro. I didn't even try to read it normal. I just got right to the mirror. <laughs> Dude, you're a purist. That's great. Yeah, you're because I, I was confident. After doing all the um, Spanish stuff, reading English mirror image is not hard for me. But now how clearing of the cobwebs does it feel to learn a second language as an adult? It feels great. It's so it's much incredible. work, but it feels great. Oh, it, it's literally... Uh, 
very euphoric or something. It's it's life giving. Yeah, learning a new language is giving you a new life. Like I have two personalities: the me in the United States, and then me, the gringo. That's the other me. I really want to support you. I think you're, you know, I love my little book and stuff, but like your thing is really cool. Well, your, yours will be mirrored soon enough. Well, I'll send it back to you and then you can upload it as a mirrored edition. So that you, I can get it on Amazon mirrored. It's not that hard is what you're saying. I mean, I did it with big three MMD. So um, this, this Benjamin Franklin submission for the, his autobiography will be my first truly mirrored book with the exception of, I think I'd have to have at least a few pages in there that are traditional, it. which which is given for anyone who picks up the book, if it's completely freaking mirrored, dude, like you gotta have a few pages explaining it. Cause it's like, you know, it's, but, but, but once you explain it, you tell people flip over, then it's up to them to practice. It's, but I, the cover has gotta be important. Like the cover that I have, um, it says mirrored edition on there in traditional and mirrored. Like it shows, and the, the cover itself is mirrored with the exception of the autobiography part. So I'm hoping people will get it. I guarantee though, there's going to be someone who's going to buy it and they're going to open it up and they'll be like, why is this thing all backwards? But um, ah. I hope not. Well, that's, that, that has to happen with any product at some point. They just bought the wrong product. That's fine. Uh, yeah, so give me like a week or two because I'm rereading it. I'm in a chess club here. And so we're, we're all kind of reading it right now. Just to get some, it actually reads really good, but just, you know, these little errors, I just want to fix before I flip it to mirror image. Nice, nice, nice. Dude, you take your time. I'm busy, but once I get the PDF, I can just go ahead and mirror all of it for you and I'll send you back the PDF document. Perfect. And then of course you can format it else however you want, but I'll send you everything mirrored. So, okay. So what's your plans? Uh, you're staying in Philly a lot. That's going on. I'm in Philly. Yeah. So I'm originally from the Scranton area. I'm from Old Forge originally the self-proclaimed pizza capital of the world and i was actually just up there uh over these last four days i just got back this morning and uh i'm, I'm still here because i my uh my family is just two hours north of here so philly is great because i'm two hours south of where my family is in scranton and i'm also two hours from new york and from dc so i have mmd philly i'd love to do an mmd new york mmd dc and um, one, I have a bunch of things that I ultimately want to do with the books. Keep doing MMD Philly, having fun with that, introducing people to this. I want to do art shows. Um, I want to gain exposure to the book and to this practice. I want to see it taught in schools. Um, I want to see products made like the world's first mirrored keyboard. I want to see that made. And um, I also want to start a coffee shop chain. <laughs> and of course, it's, I got to first do one. Uh, but it would be called Val Coffee. And everything you'd see on the walls would be written in mirror direction. And, but you'd have like QR codes and like printed material that's like written in traditional direction. And even some stuff on the wall of traditional, but like all majority mirrored and talk about, you know, Da Vinci stuff, Benjamin Franklin stuff, Einstein. You can do like all sorts of different cool um, Mercado Tecnica with it, all different marketing with it, but have it attached to a small MMD facility. So like, um, uh, a wall ball for ambi ball. You could do chalk on the walls and have um, like handrails to walk on. Um, so like a just a, a a space where for somewhere here in Philly, in the winter, MMD is harder to practice because everything I practice is in the street, and in the winter it's like twenty and thirty degrees, snow. You know, so it's I miss Southern California and, and Northern Baja for for the great weather, but th th those are a lot of my plans. Um, and then there's even other stuff beyond that, that I want to do that I hint to in my about the author part of the book, but there's a lot of work to be done, man. I hope for a lot of years. Yeah. I, I just, I really feel that the three points about your book that I have are kind of like the three points that I think are great about you, Jim, is what, what were they again? <laughs> the logic. Let's see. Could I remember? You know, no, the um, first thing was the logic. Okay. So everything you're saying, you're saying, oh, there's a better way of doing that. All that stuff, I'm, I'm in agreement with you that it's really simple. Like you said, diet. Come on. So you can't just be drinking soda all day. You have to drink actual water sometimes, maybe. Hey, like you got to party every now and then. Don't lose anything. I'm a vegan flexitarian. There, there's always meat enzymes in my system because I, I introduce it every now and then. 
Cool. But in general, I'm like 90 plus percent vegan. Your logic is very sound. So that's point number one. Two, you do cool research, which is something different because research doesn't necessarily mean you're using logic, okay? You're just doing research, whatever. But you tend, you tend to have natural in, uh, intuitive ideas that are good and then you do some cool research. And then the, and the research thing- can be even better done. Uh, so much of like, my book will definitely go through re-editions with okay. better evidence over time. I mean, I'm quoting a lot of websites that I've never met the person who actually wrote it. But again, I want that clear in the disclaimer. Like, okay. yeah, dude, I'm yeah, just a guy who works part-time. Like, no one's funding me doing this. Like, this is my first book. Me neither, me neither, me neither. Yeah. So, you, that's that integrity. I love that integrity. So, you got your logic, you got your research, and I love that you're a doer, bro. Thanks. You're amazing. All the greats are. If there's only one, if there's one thing that anyone can focus on, like, Ed, what did Edison say? He's like, I didn't, I didn't, um, what was it? I didn't fail. I learned a thousand ways to not do something properly. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like, dude, your, your, your fails are going to be the hallmark of what will ultimately be your success. Cause I mean, you're going to realize like, all right, I know to not do it like that. Like this isn't the first time that I've ever done something, but this is the, something that I've been sustainably the most passionate about because for one, I'm a complete expert in all of this. And I know it's the way that the human body is designed for physical movement. There's people every day who are spending thousands of dollars in physical rehabilitation over the course of time that they're hoping for great results. Like chiropractors, I, I hail chiropractors because they give adjustments using MMD. A great chiropractor is going to adjust you on both sides using mirror movement development. But the muscle development in mirror motion has to be there to keep that realignment in place. Because if, if you're not reinforcing it with the cement that is the muscle development, contracting it all together over time, you're just going to feel like you got to keep going back to a chiropractor all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. Chiropractors can totally help out, but if that's like your end goal, it can't be. Um, so that's that logic. That's the logic. <laughs> I'm right there. Trying to keep logic. with the theme. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, you asked me what is it about the book. It's these three things: the logic, the cool research, and then that you actually do the stuff. Like I cannot believe you printed it, Miriam. It's still, it's wonderful. You actually want to encourage people to really do the thing. Uh, even uh, with Michael, there's just a, there was just a little hesitation to to really ask society to change for the better, to not to try to be the maniac like because I'm kind of a. Maniac. But Michael did a great thing though with producing Whole Brain Power. I've met a lot of people in in on this path who have been like, yeah, I read Whole Brain Power too. And they're like, it's a great book. It's a great book. It introduced me <laughs> to a lot to of the concepts that. that that I do with MMD. I feel like MMD is the most. But no, I'm not even because Lavery, he even showed me his notebook. He and he even told me he's like, I think I have the notebook with the most mirror written pages on earth right now. Oh, for sure. Now that's you know, so story, like dude, he, a, he gets it, he gets MMD 100 percent He does, he does, but the way in which you're there's some sort of conviction you have that we didn't have because I was there 20 years ago. I was I was there through his process. And uh you just have a conviction that. You really are trying to help people and you know what you're talking about, as you said. And we just didn't quite have that conviction. It was kind of like we could do it and we wanted to share it and he wanted to share it. And uh, it just seems- I think that the, the best way, do a meetup group. Do yeah. a meetup group where you just get together and be like, yo, we're gonna practice hiking. Yo, we're gonna go walking. We're gonna go do cycling. We're gonna do, ambiden- like whatever you're, we're gonna bring out some hammers and do hammer stuff. Like meetups, dude, you'll be surprised. Like people will come and meet up for stuff. Now my meetups, like my activity sessions right now where we're focused primarily on that less dominant side of mirror motion, less people come out for those, but people will always come out for a hike, for a walk. I do tours in the city. So I do walking tours, talk about the history of stuff, go for a bike ride, go do yoga. Those five things are known by everybody and can be done. Go slacklining. You know, if you have a slackline, you know, have a day where you're like, yo, we'll go slacklining. It's not as fun as urban rail walking, but you know, people get it. Um, so there's a way to do and have fun and meet people doing it. It's, you know, there through you that know, I was able to sell thing. more of my books because people saw that, like, I guess kind of like what you're saying, like you seem to care and it seems like, you know, so yeah. And, and the book looks cool and you'll sign it for me. Totally. Yeah. So. <laughs> now you got, you got the whole thing just 
keep doing what you're doing. And if there's any way I can help you, let me know. Cause I, I think you're on the right track for sure. And if yeah, you, you know, I want to do the same. So send, send me, uh, send me pure uh, brain training and then uh, I'll mirror and send it back to you. And then if at any moment you have questions as you're going through that process of submitting and doing all of that, um, feel free to let me know. Um, yeah, it's, I can show you the program. We can do another Zoom where I show you the program that I use to do that. If there's anything that like needs to be done in the future, but you know, whatever, we can cross that bridge uh, when we get there. But yeah, I would like, I'm going to take your advice and uh, I'm, I don't know where I'm really going to be at because I'm going to try to go to a new flight school soon. But when I settle down a little bit, I'll start doing those meetup groups and for mine are going to be called like pure brain training meetup. And uh -huh. it's tough because it's tough to get people to actually use their brain. Yeah, but, and you know what? I, so you have to go go on, uh, go to Ambulife, go to the ambulife.org, click the videos button and it'll take you to the YouTube page. Watch the interview that I did with Diego Irigoyen. He attended um, California State University, Santa, uh, San Bernardino, like what, Northeast uh, out, out of LA. And he actually taught a class on ambidexterity for two years called Whole Brain Power. Wow. Taken, of course, directly from Lavery's book, but he, he was instructing it at the university level for two years. And he's also instructed it in, uh, in federal prisons. So he's got some Perfect. really good Perfect. stories from practitioners. Oh yeah. Yeah. His book's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, he, he's he's Lavery inspired I, also. Lavery I'm was his transformation to too. What, what were you saying? That Lavery was his transformation. And EBA sure. too. EBA Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. I love to support these guys. Like I just, if you're spreading the word about activating the left side and, and the mirror image reading is so cool. I'm all about that. Call it whatever. It doesn't have to be pure brain training. I'm all about MMD uh, because I know it works. And yeah. that was the one thing I didn't say yet is that I, I I don't know if this is true, but in my little experience, I don't know if it's like true for other people, but when I would read mirror image, it would like activate like my pineal, pineal what is that called? Pituitary. <laughs> Your pineal shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> pineal, is, I think. Pineal gland. Yeah. Pituitary? Or pituitary. Okay, yeah. Pituitary. More of like... I don't remember. But but like I would see like more like colors and stuff before I was going to bed. Like weird like meditation trips. Oh, like uh, synesthetic stuff. Yeah, like after like doing a lot of mantra or like breathing exercise. I was seeing yeah. like... So to me, it kind of got me in like a more spiritual like vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a different right side of the brain type. Yeah, it basically what this thing is with like MMD and whatever you're talking about, it's like, let's get real about making the world a better place. <laughs> like, well, yeah, and a lot of us say that, but that can sound, I mean, frankly, I'll play devil's advocate. That can sound like such a loaded statement because there's sure. 10,000 billion ways to make the world a better place. You know, I, right. I just, I try to think like, dude, do you want to feel physically good in your body along with your brain? Practice sure. MMD. Well, then Just, what I meant you're, was you're, like, gonna, you're gonna feel younger, your body's gonna be active for longer, your brain's gonna feel more efficient, you'll burn more calories, you'll be hungrier. Um, but again, everyone's a spectrum and everybody can choose to practice it more hardcore or less, or you dabble with it or whatever. I mean, I have friends who they dabble a little bit with the mirrored portion, and then I have other people who they're reading and they're like, nah, I haven't messed with the mirror portion. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. Totally. It, but it, it's just like, dude, nutrition and exercise, every human, we all know how important that is, does not change the fact that there are millions of us Americans in our cars every day after s sitting in a cubicle for eight hours in a drive through McDonald's for dinner. It just, it doesn't matter to a lot of us. So there, there's many people who will never practice MMD as adults. Now, again, because kids instinctively practice it, if kids grow up in a school environment where you actually do practice MMD, you know, any, any school can institute it with their gifted program to start with and then see what results you get. And then there's ways that you can implement it to those in the younger crowd too. There's ways that you can inform and educate parents as to what this is about and why you're doing it. Start with charter schools. There's many progressive charter schools. So there's a lot of great work to be done, you know, and I want to be part of all of it. Anyway. Awesome stuff, Jim. Seriously, awesome. Good job. Yeah. Um, for me, Yvonne, it's getting a little later. It's for me, it's after 9:30. I work in the morning. This has been an awesome conversation from my end, but 
you know, what else would you want to share with everybody who, who would be watching this, you know, um, pure brain train, obviously they can get on Amazon. Uh, go ahead. And I'd say, check out this big three MMD. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Uh, I, I'm, I I'm really happy you with on what, that. uh, Michael Lavery's training has done for me. Call it pure brain training, call it whole brain power, call it MMD. Yeah. It's all coming from the core base logic that we are symmetrical. Bilateral beings. We're, yeah, we're symmetric, we're bilateral. Uh, we have these, you know, this design and we got to just love our, it's all about love too. You just got to love the little, the little guy who's not as strong as the other guy. You, gotta, you know, and yeah. I, that's in, what in I, my I want love. That's what I want to give to the world. It's like love yourself and give your left hand that juice to grow. Totally, totally. You know, it, I don't know if you noticed it, but in the very middle of the book, I have the page with my buddy Timmy Gretz, where it shows him mirrored image and it shows him doing what looks like he's um, he's he's throwing up a peace sign in the very middle yeah. of the book. So Timmy taught me more about the brain than anybody because of his accidents. He lost 33% of his brain mass. On that page, I say something about God. I say, uh, if I can recall here from memory, um, there's two things God wanted for humanity, perfection and immortality. And then you flip the page over and it says, but at least he got the third freedom. Because we all freedom. Humans, we're free to do whatever we want. We're free to practice MMD. We're free to not. We're free to eat healthy. We're free to not. We're free to exercise. We're free to not. Um, but in my pursuit of all this MMD stuff, and plus I grew up in what I think was a pretty overbearing religious environment in a lot of ways, like Catholic high school, I nearly got expelled. Um, I went to a pretty overbearing Protestant church as a kid growing up. Um, and in my book, I mentioned something about, um, I wanna see people suffering from CRAD, um, see, see healing and honest community in the church. And there's a lot I can say about that. But I remember that. the, I the God that part, book. In, in, in my study of all of this with MMD, I'm glaringly convinced we have a creator who intelligent was like, I'm going to make this organic symmetric machine and it's going to be crazy and it's going to live forever. Hmm. And a lot of me saying that has to do with some stuff that I've learned about in a branch of science that's been known as creation science. When I was, I was more heavily going to church in the mid 2000s. And I came across some DVD series that were talking a lot about creation science, was looking at some stuff, but they basically are these guys who they look at the story of Genesis as like, okay, if that was true, how is that physically explainable? How? That's like the, the, the point of the study of it. And I read some stuff that I found was very interesting. Like we have fossils of mammoth plants, mammoth creatures like dinosaurs, even humans as giants fossilized. And that basically they would say, well, God originally made earth under different conditions. Plants were bigger. There was water more under the crust and there was a firmament of water above the earth and it created a greater barometric pressure. If all these conditions were true, man would have potentially lived forever. And that's why like, if you read Genesis, it talks about 900 years, 800 years, 700 years, things that sound fictitious. But then when you hit the flood in Noah, it goes from like 400 to 300, 200. It begins to drop to where it's now like 120. No one's more than that. But it's a very interesting, um, if you look at it, like how that goes, it, it sounds like God would have intended for us to live forever. I say all of that to bring home the main point. Man could not have lived forever if he did not practice MMD. Because the body would atrophy on one side if you only ever did everything right-handed. Man could never live forever. And now today we can see you have, you have added longevity. MMD is not going to make you live forever, but it just makes me think much more about God as a creative designer, not as one who's, you know, you see so much suffering in the world. It's very easy, in my opinion, to question the presence of God. But as far as like a creative designer, like do you and I as humans, we understand what it means to be creative. We want to make, we want to make robots to look like humans. Like, where does that come from? You look at the complexity of the systems within the body. I guess it could have been macro evolution over billions of years, but I'm not convinced of that. So there's certainly micro evolution with a lot of stuff, but, you know, I wasn't going one point in particular with all of that, but since we're on this topic and, and I think we're, we're talking about what makes us really tick when it comes to this topic, I want to pursue more on what that looks like 
in, in the most proven sense, quote unquote, scientifically, because I don't want it to sound religiously crazy, but like the human body, dude, is incredible. When it's operating in its optimal form, in its symmetry, in its balance, like it is so, it could just do so many incredible things. That's you it. Know? Yeah. Um, so that's the third part that I like about your book is the doing part. Yeah. Is just to make it have make that human being that actually is ambidextrous. Make a lot of them. Let's make a lot of human beings are ambidextrous. Yeah. yeah. And eat right and do a little bit of exercise regularly and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And thankfully, there are a lot of people who do do it. You know, when I lived in San yeah. Diego, I met many people who were the age of my dad now. And those people who I met, they were completing marathons. They were riding their bikes across the country. It's not the norm, not everybody, but there's many people who they eat right. They exercise, they work to maintain balance. Um, they're able to enjoy a more long haul lifestyle that dude. I, and I've said it for years. The people who make me the most jealous are like older fit people. If I meet a man or a woman and they're old, but they're like, I just did like a 15 mile bike ride or I went on a 10 mile jog or whatever. I'm like, dude, you're a beast. There's nothing cooler. So that's my goal too. Yeah. To be just super healthy way up there in the seventies and eighties. It's a great feeling, you know, why not? So anyway, um, I've really enjoyed this. I got a cruise. Uh, I guess any, do we have any final, uh, thoughts? No, just Truly, good job, awesome, Jim. Yeah. Good job. Uh, thank you for your work and publishing that book and really being a doer so i cherish Thanks, man. your actions thank you thank you thank you i'll tell you and i'll tell everyone else who did buy my book please leave a review on amazon if you're compelled to leave a review i'm sure it's gonna be a good one thank you very much um because you know that just gets it out to more and more people you know i want more and more people to know the story of people who when they practice it they're gonna feel better you know I also don't mind doing it full time with my life too. So buy those books. <laughs> Heck yeah, Jim. Yeah, dude. And we're going to fix all those problems. All this, the world problems you're talking about and personal problems with people. Take them off really one at a time, you know? Let's do it, man. I got your back. Dude, major, major, major. Um, If you're ever in Philly, hit me up. I will show you a great time in Philly. I will take you out to great places. You tell me whatever you're into. I'll tour you all around the city. Um, You know, you'll, you'll have a great time here. So. All right. And, and have you been in New York? I have been in New York City. I was going to say, I'm sure you've been in New York. Okay. I love juggling. So they juggle in Bryant Park. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. I love juggling too. Yeah. Wednesday nights, they have like another cool meetup at Washington Square for circus people. It's really cool. I love it. Awesome. 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 Cool. Well, you'll, you'll have to come and uh, you and I will go do some chalk art at my stomping grounds at Rittenhouse Square. I'm really down. Okay. I'll so, be there. So. We'll call, hey, muchísimas gracias de nuevo. Que les decimos adiós a todos y muchísimas gracias para patrocinarnos en uh, nuestros Órame, obras que, que queremos lograr. Ok, hasta luego. All right, dude, later.